What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and in today oh, she said welcome back and in today's video I will be answering some of your witchy questions while I cleanse you as well because I feel like we need a collective cleanse so I'm gonna cleanse myself I'm gonna cleanse clans I'm gonna cleanse you I'm gonna cleanse you sorry if you hear the cicadas and the frogs in the back because it is nighttime and it's very loud maybe this could be my background music who knows really sorry also have a little fan on me because you know what I mean? I asked you on Instagram to ask me some questions specifically for this video. I didn't pick too many, but I picked enough because I don't want this to be like blah 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 because it could get kind of boring sometimes, let's be honest. <sighs> oh, bitch. Mm. <sighs> I made this. Question number one is your favorite day of the week to do magic and personally i don't have one but i notice myself having a repeated pattern of doing work on a specific day and if you are part of the witchy community or maybe you're a baby witch and don't know this um obviously the planets are incorporated with the days of the week which then you incorporate magic as well as the moon it could be very complex on which days to do magic i know lunar witches who specifically do it on the moon um meaning like corresponding with the moon and then i know people who like to correspond with the planets in the days of like this day is with jupiter so i'm going to use it for money and luck and abundance my personal favorite day is Friday because it's connected to Venus and as we all know I feel like I'm very love witch based and that's really all I ever do. <laughs> Normally if it's like water energy I kind of like to correspond with Tuesdays. I also love to do earth magic usually on the weekends. I feel very grounded on Saturdays and on Fridays um, but again I have no preference. I really don't follow a rule book and I know some people are going to get very upset about that but I Oh, I kind of go with my intuition and if it's a day that is like for money and I want to do a love spell I'm gonna do that and if it's a day that's for like transformation and I want to do a grounding spell I'm gonna do that you know I just feel very comfortable going with my gut and my intuition more than rule books that's just my spirit you know this question is my favorite song I love this. I love music so much and I'd say music is like 99% of my practice. Something about it, the way it makes me move, you know, I love to belly dance as a form of magic. If you didn't know, now you know. It's my favorite thing to do. I'm gonna pronounce this wrong. Deva Primo. My mom and I call her Diva. Um, while I'm talking, we're gonna use a little feather. <laughs> little feather moment. We're gonna cleanse that energy. We're gonna get through your aura. Get rid of the gunk. I love feathers. I also like using my incense with feathers and like dispersing it. Something about it, like connecting to air elements. Super nice. So I love her and specifically her album, The Essence. Are you ready for this? I have a playlist called my alter ego and this is for when I'm like not feeling spiritual and I'm just like vibing so next we move on to favorite witchy oh Michi <laughs> bugs favorite witchy accessory I really like this so do we mean uh do we mean accessory like tool or we mean like jewelry, clothing? I love these earrings. That's why I'm wearing them. You can't really see. Oh, you kind of get that? Yeah. They're amethyst and they're really pretty. I forget where I got them, but it was Etsy. And I really, really love that. I also love my bangles. Just makes me feel so good and like connected to my culture, you know? Um, and what else? This isn't really an accessory, but I've had this for a while now, and it is totally my favorite. Um, this is my journal. This is like a chakra journal. It has nothing to do with the chakras inside, but I just keep all of my juice 
creative juices in here and I really really love this book just the style the way that it like opens the clasp oh my god and there's, these are all crystals <sighs> love it 10 out of 10 would do again Ooh, this is a good one do I use blood magic Eek. that is definitely a interesting topic to get into blood magic and actually any fluid magic is very intense you'll know that that is a thing that can keep you binded to somebody or keep somebody away from you forever like it's a very final thing and there are only a minuscule amount i feel of advanced people out there whatever shamans witches people in general who are familiar with the craft that could undo something like a mistake like if you make a mistake it's a big boo-boo okay this is not like a oopsies just like use a reversal candle no this is like big boo-boo um and that's why <laughs> it's almost like in the spiritual community you know how in life you don't really want to get a significant other's name tattooed on you it's the same thing with this magic it's just not a good vibe it usually ends really badly and i only am going to use it if it's for myself how do I mean that? I mean self-healing, my mental health, for physical healing, for healing of the heart. I can use blood and I don't just go and like slice myself. I know some people are so punk, but you could do it when you're menstruating. Not to be gross, but it's not gross. It's real life and women have power and it's down there. <laughs> also, if you're doing any other type of magic, like spit, usually spit is very protective or binding in love. So again, be super careful with what you're doing and make sure you're completely healthy. And if you're using another person, make sure you have their consent. Definitely don't do any fluid magic or magic period if somebody hasn't okayed it. Also, unpopular opinion. I don't know if this is a bad thing or not, but I've always wanted to when I get married get a vial of my significant other's blood or just have it somewhere i don't know there's something about that just feels so like till death do us part <laughs> i'm so weird okay different types of sage and their uses so i wrote down specifically because sometimes it's hard to differentiate there's only a couple types of sage there's tons of things to cleanse with and to smudge with but in general, if you're asking about sage, I'm going to talk about the three most common, which are California white sage, blue sage, and desert sage. For white sage, you're casting out negative energy as well as clearing all energy, which most people don't understand. When you're using white sage, you're also taking out a little bit of the... Thank you. You're also taking out a little bit of the positive energy, so you're going to want to use something to add back in that positive energy whether it be palo santo ethically sourced sweet grass something like that that brings back in that positive love and light blue sage is much more chill yes it could get rid of like the evil the negative energy blah 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 but it's more for drawing in wealth and abundance and opportunity which i really really love it for it's also really good for emotional healing i usually like to use it when i'm in a situation or a tarot reading where it's been very very heavy on someone's heart and i start to like be an empath and pick up their energy i'll do some blue sage bless them but also cleanse myself now, Desert Sage I have used before, but it is very heavy, at least for me. It is used in exorcisms, it is used in disease healing, it is used in getting rid of dark, heavy energy, and sometimes, days after using it, I still feel super heavy in my chest. Not just from the smoke, but it's very powerful and almost like takes a little bit of your energy from you. How to cast a proper protection spell during shadow work. Shadow work, I feel like because it's so heavy on the trauma and it could consume your life and be involved in your past lives and cause depression and just cause issues in general, I would say baby witches, maybe do your research, steer clear of that right away. But if you're going to do it and you want to protect yourself, there's many, many ways to protect yourself. Personally, number one, I consecrate all my jewelry with a specific intention. Whether that be my bracelets, my rings, my earrings, especially my necklace. The two main aspects, <laughs> four, the two main aspects 
I like to focus on when I'm doing healing, magic, deep work. Cover the heart, cover the third eye, cover the crown. These are our most vulnerable spots. So I'm gonna say, what do I use when I always do magic? I like to use bloodstone at my heart. I like to either have a wrap, some type of headband, or maybe do my hair in a specific protective style, or maybe even have crystals in my hair to block off that area especially when you're in a situation with energy vampires in real life people who just don't make you feel good don't vibrate i'd wear a headband sounds crazy but those of us that can connect intuitively you're going to need to protect that energy next always use salt i know it's very again taboo but it is well known because it is one of the purest forms that we have and in this type of energy work i'm going to ask you to use black salt you can use white as well but black salt has its purposes and you can look that up if you're interested also definitely don't mess with something that you aren't ready for that you aren't ready to handle because you will get what you're looking for and kind of play out and think about all the ways that things could pan out before you actually do the work because maybe you actually aren't ready you think you are you think it sounds cool you're like i'm ready to do this but the after effect and the length of time that it could take you to heal might not be as exciting and you need to be spiritually ready for that. And black candles as well, white candles, always good to have protection. Also, I got my ancestors with me at all times, so I definitely have a picture of somebody who is a protective figure in your life or if you work with gods, goddesses, deities, whatever you want to call it, definitely call upon that as protection and you should be good. Do, do, do. something you always wanted to share but no one asked my friend <laughs> my friend Calliope she asked this one and I thought it was such an interesting question because normally you think like I don't want to share something about myself but I just think it's interesting and I have no answer yet <laughs> what's something that I want to share that no one's asked oh this is a good one <laughs> This is a good one, but I don't know if this is going to create a, U a YouTube issue. Um, <laughs> so, I'm not a smoker. We're going to call it the herb. Okay, I'm not a smoker, but anybody that I've been with has been, as well as their family, which is totally cool. Like, sick, rock on, smoke your oregano, you know? And also, I come from a family that's very open and isn't against that but personally my immediate family can't usually smoke because we have a really bad reaction like we literally trip like we're on drugs like not oregano but like rainbows there was this one time probably the last time i smoked <laughs> And I didn't know that this was gonna happen. I didn't even know I had this ability. And when I smoke, I get this feeling that is like a cold rush of water. It's like I drank the iciest, coldest water ever. I feel like a bang in my heart and then I open my eyes and I'm out of my mind. I'm high, I'm out of my mind. So it was a situation where he had to go home and take care of something, but I couldn't be left alone. So he leaves me with my mom. My mom's my best friend, so she wasn't weird about it at all. She was like kind of just dying at like everything I was saying, but I cannot stop talking for the entire time that I'm like out of my mind. Out of nowhere, I start channeling her parents. And my grandparents are lovely and they've obviously passed on and you know, I have pictures them back there like we were very close but there's many things that I don't I didn't know about them because my mom had me when she was a bit older so I didn't get as much time with them so basically I was saying things that nobody would have known only my mom describing scenarios people's personalities maybe when they were younger um certain items in the house and like how they looked and how people feel about them and it was just crazy things I never knew I was speaking and I was seeing them as well in the vision and it was good things you know nothing was scary I have never had this ability in my life and I think I was really freaked out but it was just channeling and coming out of me like something was taking me over I didn't have time to panic it was just like 
mouth vomit, like word vomit. Like I just couldn't stop talking and my mom's sitting there like a ghost, like, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna go too in depth, but it was a crazy time and I've never smoked again since then because I'm gonna be a psychic, I guess. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. Mm. How to read incense smoke. How to read incense smoke. Okay, if your incense smoke is completely smooth, in an upward direction, flowing very calmly. There's positive energy. It's completely getting rid of the negative energy and there's no worries. If the room gets so heavy with smoke that it looks like a hot box session, there is negative entities near you. And I would open a window and I would then sage or use something heavy like desert sage. Because if that energy is enough to not even disperse into the air but to create like a fog smog girl get out <laughs> it's not good if there is black soot being puffed off of your naturally white incense smoke this is you visually being able to see the negativity remove itself so the white smoke is clearing it out you're seeing the puffs energy and spirit um and vibration be taken off. Also, the classic people are like, oh my god, there's a ladder type effect. What does this mean? It's a very good omen. To see the ladder, it's like climbing up in life. Again, very positive just as the calm smoke would be. How to use your third eye in magic. My number one tip is going to be envisioning. Um, obviously with your third eye, it's all about the third eye. The eye that we can't I guess humanly see from but we can spiritually see from you're going to envision white light on whatever type of work you're doing so whether that be candle magic uh, magic with oils magic with herb incense dream magic intuition you're going to envision white light surrounding the area and that's going to kind of tap in to your third eye you can also use color magic which is going to be using indigos and purples and even whites to wake up that third eye. Something that I love to do before I go to sleep every night is work on my chakras. And I do that by hypnosis and meditation. So sometimes I just listen to the healing sound bowls, singing bowls, of the chakra tone that it's in as singing bowls normally have the tones. Just focus on that white light as you're going to sleep and you will actually manifest in your dreams, which is super cool. Last but not least, love, love this, advice for beginner witches. And I know I say baby witch, and I don't want you to feel discouraged by being called a baby witch, but I think it's cute. I think it's a cute way of being like, you know, welcome. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's not hard. So come on in and I'll teach you. I'll be your mama. Okay, the number one thing I wrote down, and I have to look at what I wrote down because I haven't looked at this in a few days, and I just want to make sure I got all my points across. Number one. Baby witches! No love spells. Just don't do it. Just, just don't do it. Okay? We do not need to go there just yet, if ever. Okay? Unless you're doing a self-love spell. Okay? Unless you're doing something for somebody else in a nice way. Like, ooh, I want her to have self-confidence. Alright, love that for you. But... Blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna put these rose petals in here. And I'm gonna squirt this oil. And I'm gonna light this pink candle. And he's gonna love me made that mistake my first go around all right you know what that led me to an abusive relationship don't do it <laughs> and the crazy part is because you manifest it and you want it so bad the people want to stay with you so yeah you love that person but they turn into be a freaking crazy psychopath 99 percent of the time and then they just constantly obsess with you because you're like let me light this pink candle and my name's gianna and i'm stupid hello welcome also, want to stress, don't freak out if at the beginning your spells don't work. If you're kind of expecting it or you're trying so freaking hard, they're of course not going to work. And you might think right away they're supposed to work or you're supposed to get this crazy sign or confirmation. Sometimes you don't. My first go around as well, I didn't see anything work and then I had to look up how to make spells work. And truly what I've learned from that is intention breathing in, letting go, and trusting. Especially if you're doing candle magic, I'd recommend that as your first go around because it is very, very potent um, and gets things done pretty fast. 
but if you're doing something else with herbs, incense, dream work, it could take a really long time. So just try to open those chakras and you will be on your way. You don't always need gods and goddesses. You do not always need deities. Sometimes you could focus on yourself. You could focus on the universe. You could focus on nature, the abundance, the stuff that you can actually feel and grasp. That has energy as well. Or you can focus on God whoever that may be to you, as well as Mother Mary over here, which is what my practice is. And I think a lot of people find this interesting because they say, you can't have Christian witches, all right? A lot of the even high priestess of witches don't believe Christian is real, like Christian witches. But I oppose, and I don't necessarily call myself a witch. I mean, sometimes in my videos, but in day-to-day -day life, I wouldn't say I'm a witch. I just say I'm Gianna and I love connecting to all that I can connect to and for me when I connect to God or connect to Mother Mary or nature I'm using and harvesting the aspects that were given to me okay if cinnamon is for lust and protection and love and I was given that right and given that knowledge I'm using it out of respect for what I've been given okay that's how I connect to my God and I don't put anybody above my God that's another thing that I want to say um, and if you are the only one doing the magic for you and don't really know where it goes to, that's okay. Never forget to protect your space. We already talked about that. Um, never forget that. That's extremely important. I've had an experience where something has tried to attach itself to me that I can go into if you guys really want to know. Um, and that will be the last time I ever forget to not protect myself and my space. And last but not least, you are never wrong in your own practice. Do not let somebody bully you to think that you're wrong for having a belief system. For this is created for you. Like, this is your space. This is your belief system. Whatever you feel is right, is right. Whatever you feel is wrong, is wrong. Because it's for you, for your energy, for your human existence. Okay? So don't let anybody bully you into that unless you're doing some negative stuff or cursing people for no reason. Just never take the advice of others who aren't on your specific journey. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this and you got something out of it and it was educational. Honestly, I felt like I was channeling spirit the whole time. So I don't know, kind of blacked out. Don't remember what I said and what I didn't. <laughs> I love you very, very much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night and I will see you in my next video.